Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Monday, July 29th, 2013. Yesterday on the French Riviera in Cannes, a, uh, a movie scene erupted. However, it was real life. A uh, armed man armed with a Colt 45 walked into the Carlton Intercontinental Hotel, one of the most famous hotels on the Riviera. Within the hotel was a temporary exhibit of jewelry by the prestigious Leviev Diamond House in London, owned by the Russian billionaire uh, Lev Liviev. The armed man emerged with $50 million U.S. worth of jewelry. He uh, did not cause any physical harm to anybody, but indicated that all the jewelry was to be put into a black uh, bag from which he uh, emerged with the hotel and calmly walked away. It's one of the biggest heists in history. The uh, Carlton Intercontinental Hotel is uh, the scene of a number of famous heists of jewelry. It was also the movie set hotel for the 1955 Alfred Hitchcock uh, thriller called To Catch a Thief, which was uh, a jewelry heist story in itself. This will have ramifications into the insurance and reinsurance market if the jewels are not recovered. Meanwhile, in Italy yesterday, about 38 people were killed, at least 10 more seriously injured after a bus plunged into a ravine about 100 feet down a ravine uh, outside of Naples. Uh, it was in the Campania region of southern Italy. It was last night. The bus had uh, lost control, apparently, coming to a stop, coming down a hill in heavy traffic and then plunged across a guardrail and ended up at the bottom of the ravine. Uh, very near us here in Princeton, New Jersey, up in northeastern Pennsylvania on Saturday night, a helicopter crashed, killing all five people on board. Uh, there were heavy thunder and lightning storms at the time. The helicopter that went down was a Robinson R66 turbine helicopter. It was heading from Binghamton, New York to uh, Layton, Pennsylvania on Saturday night when it crashed into a heavily wooded, rugged area. Uh, thunder and lightning with heavy rain at about the time of the crash uh, is most likely the cause. There were a number of areas where the helicopter could have sat down and waited for the weather to pass, but the pilot, for some reason, elected not to do that and ended up crashing. Uh, interesting news regarding Superstorm Sandy. Second quarter financials continue to indicate that uh, cedents or purchasers of reinsurance are reporting lower losses from Sandy than had originally been thought. There was an article by Scott Vincent today in the Insurance Day uh, this means that a number of reinsurers who had immediately put aside large claim reserves in anticipation of large claims have begun to release those reserves. Montpelier Reef, for example, already released reserves relating to uh, Sandy. Uh, the company has released between four and five million dollars already. Uh, they said that we haven't seen the level of creep in seed and loss estimates for Sandy that we've seen for some other events. Uh, Validus Re has not released any reserves, but they may soon. Uh, but they did warn that Sandy was a very complex event, even though we're getting nice reports from customers that suggest it may come in lower than expected. We're not comfortable writing down losses yet, only nine months later. Meanwhile, the Bermuda authorities are reporting that 34 new insurers were registered in Bermuda in the first six months of 2013. This is an increase of more than 40% over the same period last year. Uh, in addition, 12 of the new registrants for uh, the second quarter of 2013 were special purpose insurers with anticipated premiums of over $700 million. These would be special purpose insurers for insurance linked securities. And Allegiant Air MD 83, uh, en route from Iowa to St. Petersburg, made an emergency landing at the Albany Airport in Georgia last night. Uh, there were reports that there was a fire in the cargo hold. All 158 people on board the plane uh, evacuated through slides. Uh, the passengers uh, are being bussed down to St. Petersburg from Albany, Georgia. It's not yet known whether or not there was, in fact, a fire. An oil spill that has leaked from a pipeline in Thailand has reached a popular tourist island in the eastern part of the country. This is despite continuing efforts to try to clean it up. About 50 tons of crude oil spilled into the sea of Rayang province on Saturday morning after a leak sprung in a pipeline operated by the PTT Global Chemical Company. Streaks of crude oil about a thousand feet wide have marred the shore 
of Prowl Bay on Samet Island, one of the most popular beach destinations among Thai and foreign tourists. And uh, if you haven't been paying attention to what's been going on in Brazil, it's very interesting. Pope Francis I is uh, back in the Vatican right now, but not uh, until after he uh, said the Mass yesterday for three million people on Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro. This was uh, two days after he offered Mass for two million people in the same location. Uh, the Pope is uh, breaking records in so far as expectations of his popularity quite an interesting situation. He's a Pope from Argentina and his first foreign trip now is to Brazil, uh, the world's most, uh, or South America's most populous Catholic country. Uh, he's emerging as a bit of a rock star. It's a little bit reminiscent of Pope John Paul II. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.